Hi, everybody. It's Nancy Warriors with For Your Canine. I can't even say my last name today. What are you drinking? <laughs> it's Nancy Reyes. <laughs> it's a lot of it's a lot of working. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I'm Joanne Soiki with Fur Better, Fur Worse. And Lisa Batasco with Canine Defined. Uh, welcome, everybody. Yeah, it's been a long weekend, as you can already tell. So this should be pretty interesting tonight. Happy uh, 2003. Yes, 2023. 2023. 2023. <laughs> wow, 20 years ago. Wow, <laughs> we're all in rough shape. It's gonna be a yes. good night tonight. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully, you guys had a really great um <laughs> uh, holiday and uh, now on onward and upward to 2023 and um uh kind of getting started. And kind of this topic came up because I have a new puppy, and and kind of a lot of people have new puppies. So I thought this was an interesting topic um, only because when I have puppies, I'm a little, as most as those of you who know me very well know that I'm, I can be a little bit hypersensitive to any kind of <laughs> owie or behavior that my dog has. So um, I thought, and so I'm always watching for different things or things that might be problematic. So I'm kind of in that mode now. So I was thinking this would be good to talk about like what is normal, what isn't normal uh, when you have a young puppy. Because a lot of places or a lot of people say, oh, he'll grow out of it. Yeah, and sometimes they do. They totally do. They grow out of it and they end up, um, it's not, it's, it becomes a non issue. But then other times it's, it, it isn't, uh, does, they don't grow out of it and it is a problem. And a lot of some of these things can be addressed and taken care of. If you catch it early and work on it right away, and then it becomes, it does become a non-issue as they get older. So, and like I said, I'm in that mode because I'm watching my puppy, making sure everything that is happening and he's doing is normal. And, um, and if I see anything that's a little bit of, that's problematic, I, I, I try to address it as quickly as I can. So that that way, as he gets um, older, it's less, it's a lesser issue, especially those of, those of us have, that have large breeds. When you have a when you have a smaller breed, um, some of the problems are not as big as if you have a dog like, for example, which we'll talk about. We'll talk about resource guarding. Um, resource guarding. Not that it's okay with a little dog, but uh, that uh, when you have a large breed dog, they get fast really, really, really quickly. So, so you want to address it as fast as possible. So um, with any, any size dog, cause my resource guard is a 12 pound dog. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, so one of the things that uh, we wanted to address is, you know, what are normal behaviors for puppies and what are maybe that something that you might want to address or discuss or go see somebody about or, or whatever. So, uh, <coughs> Oh, your trial buddy. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people getting puppies, so myself included, uh, Lisa, and you know, so two out of three of us have new puppies. So there you go. <laughs> uh, and Joanne's, uh, you know, not not up in not in that department for a while. <laughs> well, I'm with her on that. Like this is my last puppy for quite a while. So, <laughs> which I love him. He's really great, but it's a lot of work, and you want to make sure, especially when. You want to make sure they grow up to be really good humans. I mean, good pet, pet you know. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so tired. Uh, when they, so they grow up to be good, you know, citizens, canine citizens, uh, you want to make sure. Because a lot of the stuff, it's a lot of work on the front, on the front end, but on the back end, be, they're wonderful. It's great. And um, I was just talking to Lisa and Joanne. I was at the IKC show this weekend. And a lot of um, some of our students were there, some of our students with young dogs. And uh, putting them in that environment after all the training they've done, it's really nice to see that the dogs and them can handle a busy situation, you know, a lot of different new novel things, a lot of noise, a lot of activity. And so it's really kind of um, kind of cool to to um to see that, you know, that work pay off. Right. Um, so, um, anyway, I think we were going to talk about resource guarding. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's the first thing. Um, and I don't, I'll, I'll let Lisa and Joanne speak to it. When I see, I look for resource guarding when they're very young, cause you can fix it quote unquote, or make it pretty good uh, if you catch it very early. 
uh, if you let the dog practice resource guarding for many years, <laughs> I, I personally have had quite a difficult time. Um, I've had a very difficult time having success stories with those. I don't know about you guys. Yep. The longer it goes on, the harder it is to break. That's anything. <clears throat> Jumping on counters. I mean, anything, right? Yeah. But resource guarding, you know, that'll, that'll cost them their lives in many cases, right? It, you know, that they well, resource again, Yeah. If the dog's over 10 pounds, it will. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Papillons and little tinies, right? I mean, talk about my tiny. <laughs> So. Um, I, I remember, well, and Nancy remembers this dog, James. James. Yes, James. yes. I got him and I was fostering and he would resource guard. Water. And um, he resource guarded against people and dogs. And um, I remember he put a hole on Lucas's head from guarding. And then I remember looking over and seeing Fling lick his head. And I'm like, what's that? So I go to inspect it and see a hole there. And I'm like, I was about fit to be tied. I was like, you're lucky you're with me. <laughs> but um, I ended up keeping him, fostering him for six months before we actually found a home. But, um, I, you know, it's just he was over around a year-ish and he even got parvo and everything. And it was, you know, it, it was hard. But that was kind of the end when, you know, the problem is, is when you're a trainer and you foster, right? You get the hard cases and some of those hard cases are things like that. And he could have lived perfectly fine in my home with my own family. But when he was placed, I explained everything. But, you know, people do what people do. And um, he did bite. And when I checked in, um, oh, he's, you know, he bit, but it was my fault. I'm like, okay, well, you know, just know that this is something you have to manage for the rest of his life. So, you know, it becomes a management issue. And then just because a dog is okay with you doesn't mean it's okay with everyone else either. Right. So that's the hard part about it. Too. Yeah. And I know like Lisa, we talked about my foster Roscoe, my current foster. And, you know, Lisa had mentioned it in a previous Facebook live about the relationship between you and the dog matters a ton. Right. Oh, yeah. So if he even has something like a raw bone where he even still gets kind of crappy with me, um, but I can get it. Right. So, but if you walked into my house, ain't no way, right. He's going to have a fit. Um, so I think going backwards, right, resource guarding at a low level is normal, right? If I have something and you come by, I might be like, are you going to, are you going to take that? Don't take that. Right. And so it's kind of like this cautious, I have something really, really amazing. And so you have to be careful, especially with the puppies or a new dog that you get, right? Don't steal stuff, right? We get we got all this old information where it's like, oh, you know, get down and, and, you know, see if you can pull their food bowl away and then get it back and pull their food bowl away. Why would you do that? Don't. Please right? don't. It's going to cause don't. problems. I will tell you recently I had a case where it was a very young puppy that was resource guarding and um, um, bad advice was given to the owner and it was not able to be corrected because the owner ended up being afraid of the dog. So that made it way worse. Um, and we talked about things to do. She was doing things, but that set the tone for the puppy already. And that puppy, um, was not safe and it was a puppy. It was young. Um, and, and it would snap at everybody and try to bite everybody. And it was, um, <clears throat> it was extremely sad because we tried and I said, look, you know, cause I don't, I don't, I don't blow smoke. It's like, this is what it is. And this is what you have to do for the rest of your life and how to manage it. And I'm not, I'm not one to recommend rehoming a resource guarding dog um, unless it's a super savvy person, like someone like who understands dog training and dog behavior, um, because that's something that can go awry pretty bad. This dog was, this puppy was not very social and it was very afraid. And so that only contributed to further um, the situation. It had no, it had no connection with the owner, even though the owner was providing all the good things it could possibly have. So at that point, she ended up um, euthanizing the puppy and he was under a year. Um, it was it was a pretty severe case. It was sad. Was it a big dog? I'm just curious. Um, it was 20, 30 pound dog. Enough. Not, okay. not Yeah, enough to make a difference, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead, Nancy. So 
when you're looking at resource guarding, so low level and most and some people like I my I've only had one dog. I've had a lot of dogs, but I've only had one dog that resource guarded. Uh, um, and her, Rizzo, she's still she's still with me. She's twelve years old, um, but I saw it when she was eight weeks old. <laughs> So we worked on it. You know, every time I passed by, something good happened. Every time she had something to chew, something great happened. All those things. So I, it, we started working on it as a very, and so we tell people, or I tell people that with puppies to do that all, with all puppies, doesn't matter if the dog's guarding or not. So anytime I pass by, like now I have a new puppy. If I pass by his bowl or stick my hand in his bowl, he's going to get a treat. Something good's going to happen in there. Um, same with the little, um, my rescue beagle, some, I'll come by and I'll open the crate while they're eating. And I drop something good in there every so often. And they think, oh, so every time I come in the room, life is good. It's a very, it's a positive thing. So you can, you can, because if, especially if you do it when they're young, even if you're not having a problem, okay, you're not having an issue. And when they're chewing a bone or especially, you know, or a bully stick or whatever, that you can drop a little, a treat or something as they're chewing and then they can eat it and then go back to what they were doing. So that's that's just something that it should be incorporated into their everyday lives as young puppies, right? Um, so it doesn't become a problem later on, right? It doesn't become an issue. Um, you don't want to wait for it to, to be an issue and then then do it. I do it with I do it with dogs like my young puppy has no issue with that at all, has no problem with that whatsoever. But, but I also you you know what, though? I also think there's a sociability aspect to this as well as a there social is. tolerance Absolutely. issue, right? Yep. Like, um, I, I think that, like you guys, we all agree, right? The um, there's It's a normal behavior, but to an extreme, it's not, right? right. So everybody's going to test it. Some test it more than others. Some, like, mess around with it and stuff like that. Um, and some are... Um, some will test it with people over dogs and that's a whole nother aspect as well. Right. Because people, you know, getting bit is a bad thing. <laughs> um, dog situation, you can, you can manage some of that and, and work on that. And again, I think the prime, the prime point of this is that when you see the behavior, you need to address it um, and you can preemptively do stuff. But I th also think that um, you need to, when you do like, I think a lot of people are getting bad information, like pull the puppy away. And, you know, and, and it makes me insane. I'm like, please don't do that. And then, oh, I got to show them that's okay. I'm like, all right, put my hands in the bowl. Please don't do that. Like, don't make it a thing if, if it isn't a thing, mm -hmm. right? Don't right. push that hard. It's not worth it. Right. Because yeah. you, actually, you actually worse, you make your relationship very unsafe for the dog to be around you. Right. And that's what I mean. And when I say open and I put a treat in, I just pass by. Yeah. And like, you know, I'm passing by, drop a treat and we'll go on my way. I don't make a big deal out of that situation, right? It's a very, you know, um, and with Rizzo, I was a little more mindful of it because she did have that issue. For my young puppy that doesn't have an issue, I just do it occasionally and um, I give him a treat and I have him drop stuff and we do the trade game and it's all fine with him because he doesn't have an issue. But Rizzo did at a very young age. Um, it was very clear she was going to um, she was going to be a little bit of a garter. Um, so uh, so there's really yeah, the really basic things. And, you know, the guarding is a lot. It, dogs that resource guard, like you said, <laughs> <laughs> Tell the pine cone boy. I said, yeah, luckily I don't have any pine cones around here because he likes to okay. get some stuff. <laughs> um, uh, he, you know, it's one of those things. He, you, you want to just, you know, make sure that it's not he, they don't grow out of that resource guarding piece. I guess is what I'm trying to say. And there's a sociability and a confidence um, factor uh, with social with um, resource guarding. So doing things to build their confidence. You know, a nice training class. Um, you know, other, other confidence building activities will help um, alleviate some of the resource guarding, you know, uh, situations too, because the, the, the component, you know, and the sociability, some dogs aren't super social, so they're not social and they're not confident. And, and to be honest, it's hard to say, right, what contributes to resource guarding. Um, I, we know that um, 
sociability and and confidence or low confidence are a big part of it but we you know there's other dogs that have low sociability and low confidence and they don't resource guard so it's really it's been very we've been trying to think like okay what what are the what's the combination that causes that right well i also think the other part to consider right is the fact that majority of the time these dogs are testing during their teenage time right so then from a neurobiological standpoint there is lots of things that are going on, right? The excitatory um, yes. um, um, neurons are, uh, inhibitory neurons at that time are excitatory. So they have big feelings about everything. So if you're experiencing this during teenage time, which would be, you know, what, five, five and a half months on up um, to what, two years or more, depending on who the dog is and their temperament. I mean, I think that's another contributory fact as well. I think I'm much more concerned when a dog is exhibiting resource guarding at eight weeks old. And I've seen that too. Oh yeah, I have that one. Is cra- <laughs> yeah, that I is crazy one. scary actually, because you're like, oh, if you go in the wrong hands, bad things are going to happen. Right. And I had another eight week old Rottweiler puppy. Same. I was standing there talking to his people. I... Uh, gave the puppy a little chewy something while I was t- chatting with them and I moved my foot and I noticed the puppy freeze and I'm like, hmm. did I, mm. you know, did I see that? Did I not see that? Cause you know, sometimes, uh, and then I moved my foot again and the puppy did the same and I'm like, okay, <laughs> we got bigger problems, but that was one of my f- successes, right? Cause I caught it young. Uh, he, she was an eight week old little Roddy puppy. And uh, they did all the things right, and the dog was uh, grew up to be, and it's already probably passed now, but um, had a nice family life. They had children and everything, and it wasn't a problem, but it was addressed before they had children. <coughs> so they fixed, they had the dog, and then they, eventually they started a family, so it wasn't an issue at, after yep. they had children. And, and remember, this doesn't always have to be food, right? It is a lot of the yes. time with people. But it can be toys. It can be, you know, anything that the dog finds rewarding. I know the foster dog I have now got given up because he he snarked at a kid for a pen. He was chewing up a pen. Right. But it was an important enough resource to him to say, get away from me. Um, so don't just assume, oh, he's great with his food bowl and everything that, you know, you can't see it. So right. just remember, too, especially when they're in that puppy stage in adolescence. Right. They are forming neuro pathways so you three times on them you say what is that give that to me right that can be enough to to create that in a in a dog it's it's not going to create it in a dog that wouldn't have had it otherwise for the most part but you can make it so much worse just by that <laughs> yeah and you know what joanne now that you bring that up that is such a good thing my puppy always picks everything up because he's a lab and he and you can see he's like if I want something from him, he's like, I don't know. I really want it. I go, I know you do, but I'm like, come on, bring it to me. Yay. And I, and, and he, and I just t- touch him and it's like, it's okay. You can have it. And then I, sometimes I'll take it and sometimes I won't. And then if I take it, I always give it right back. There you go. And then let him go off and do his thing. So now it's, you could see it's less of a, it's not, it's not a thing anymore. Right. But it was interesting. He was like, I want it. I don't want you to have it. And I'm like, Oh, look at that. It was just, it just was very brief, a uh, little in his development. But then um, when he bought it, a lot of good stuff always happened and he never lost, you know? So he was like, Oh, okay. It's not a problem. <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm always like super happy and investigating, right? Like, Oh my gosh, you're so smart. What did you find? Can I see it? You know what I mean? So it sort of helps with the whole, like, can I see what you have versus you're not supposed to have that. It helps right. you It helps you as a human keep a more calm demeanor too, right? And I think one of the other things too, when you're figuring out who your dog is, mm. like my foster dog loves, loves cardboard. He loves to shred it and, you know, chew it up and he doesn't eat it. If I tried to go after him for every piece of cardboard he found in my house, I'd be fighting with him all the time. So, you know, like he finds sheer enjoyment in that. And I feel like sometimes we think, don't do that. Don't make a mess. Don't. You're not supposed to have that. It's one of his favorite things. Go ahead, buddy. I'll sweep it up when you're done. Right. And and so shifting a little bit of the human mindset, too, to say, can they ruin it? Like, is that okay? Is it an old piece of paper? Is it something you know, you were going to throw away anyway, let them have it for a minute, you know? Um, all right. So I think 
most of the people who watch us know what this stuff looks like, but I am going to show you a Go video um, of this is a it's a dog in the shelter. It's a pretty severe case of resource guarding. Uh, this dog would most likely 100 percent bite you, um, but it is an adult dog. Right. So uh, let's see. And this is what can happen if you don't address it. They don't grow out of it. Yeah. And occasionally, if you see an eight week old puppy with this. This is where Lisa was talking about. You may, this dog might not be alive, but seek training help. So you can see even on the. Wow. Yeah. Just watch it walking in frozen. Even though the tail's wagging. <laughs> Look at the mouth. The freeze the hover. Vocalization a little bit. Right. And part of it is there's a dog literally right here, which is not helping the situation. But now I'm going to cover with my feet. So you can sort of see in that scenario, right, the person's trying to do the best they can to, to say, it's okay. I mean, you no harm. Here's your food back. I don't want to take anything. But in that stimulating of an environment, there's another dog right next to you, right? I'm I'm giving you your kibble that you already have on your side. Nothing's better, right? It's not like I'm tossing in pieces of chicken. Um, you're probably not going to get anywhere working in that with that dog in that kennel, in that shelter, right? Mm -hmm. So environment matters as well. Yeah. Even though, to be fair, that dog would guard anyway once he gets comfortable in a home anyway. Right. Right. And, and so this is interesting. So we talk about, like, I took that um, shelter mentorship with Trisha McMillan, and she talks about it, um, resource guarding in the environment of sheltering, which is very different and very challenging. Then there was a study done that there's no, you can't guarantee 100%. Obviously, you can't guarantee anything about behavior because there's so many moving parts, not just the dog, but the people and the environment they live in. Mm -hmm. And so... If a dog shows resource guarding in the shelter, unless it's to a severe degree, that's where I'm like, mm, this is not a dog I would place with a family. I completely rule it out completely. But it's just interesting that, um, and I've seen some severe cases and there were a couple of dogs that came through that seemed okay. But the other component is like their brain is already being in that environment. Their brain is already working through neural pathways to say, this is how we deal with this situation when I'm under stress. So they've already started setting that, that riverbed, right, of that. And this is how we address it. So when they go home to decompress, most people don't pay attention to it or they consider it an issue because they push the dog a little too soon and mm -hmm. they don't pick things up and all that type of thing. So I think it totally um, is, it's um, an interesting thing from a sheltering standpoint when you start seeing that. Um, if it's a little, I'm like, oh, can we trade? And then that's the other thing, right? So you have these dogs and I'm not talking about puppies that go into homes right off and are raised in a home, like in a shelter situation. If you have a dog that's exhibiting that, I'm super careful about placement of that dog because not everyone is going to be savvy enough to read the dog and understand how to help that dog so they can actually make it worse. And I've seen that happen. Um, yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind like of Roscoe, sad. right? <laughs> right, right, right. That's why he's with you for how long now? Eight months? Seven, yeah, yeah seven, seven, eight. I don't know. First oh, time right, there you go. Right. <laughs> but even, but you know, and those are, and it, it, these are also true of certain, certain dogs that you can get. You can get a dog from a great breeder that has yeah. resource guarding issues. Mm -hmm. So it's not only the shelter dogs. Right. I have had clients come with well bred dogs from a good breeder that has. Uh, resource guarding issues. So just because you bought a dog from a, a reputable breeder doesn't mean that it can happen because no breeder can breed 100% perfect dogs. They just, you know, all every single one of their dogs can't be perfect. And right. again, it's hard to pinpoint exactly why certain dogs resource guard and others don't. Um, but you want to just, you know, keep an eye on it and, and, and see what you you know, and then I, I wanted to adjust with the little dogs. People think it's very cute 
for a little dog, when they growl and go, because eh, they're small and they're adorable, they think it's the cutest thing ever. And then they become adult dogs with the, with the resource guarding issue. So, um, yes, it's very cute when they're three months old, four months old, a little bit of growling little papillon or something. Um, but oh. It's like Dobermans, papillons, shepherds. Yeah. Pretend it's a Rottweiler, right? Like, yeah. yeah, it's like it's still not okay. <laughs> eventually that you know even though the little dog um you know yeah it, it, and I, I like i said i think we, i mentioned this before there was a a min pin that you know did 30 stitches worth of damage on somebody's mm -hmm. face for that yeah. so just because they're small doesn't mean they can't really cause some serious um problems so um so so resource any kind of you know, when the, you're feeding the puppy, it, when you're nearby, you can just feed the puppy by your feet as you're washing dishes. See how that puppy handles that situation. Um, or if you go, if you put him in a crate, which I, I do now, put him in a crate, feed him. If I get near the crate, if I go to open the door, if I go to put something in, if I do, you know, what, what kind of, how does my puppy look? Does it seem like he's worried or not? So those are all things to look for, right? And, um, and if you see it, don't freak out. Just see some, you know, if you see any kind of resource guarding, definitely see, sooner is better than later for for that, especially with a young puppy. Don't wait and see if it gets better, if it goes away or whatever. It's It, it just doesn't. So addressing it and, and handling it the proper, you know, the proper way is critical for um, the, the, for your home, for the dog, for everyone involved, right? Yep. And so <clears throat> Lisa has a really nice video of her puppy when if we flip the resource yeah. guarding bit to dog dog. Right. And um, I didn't watch this, but I think I saw it earlier. This is pretty normal, right? Like you're not worried about him or are you a little bit? No. I, he's, so there's a couple things. Let me see. Are you posting it or am I? No, I'll, I'll bring it up. I got it right here. OK, perfect. Thanks. Um, so Riff is now five months old and Tenor is an intact male Border Collie who is four. Um, and in this video, Riff is sitting on the couch and he has a toy that Tenor wanted to, for us to throw. So Tenor, of course, being the Border Collie, takes the toy, brings it up, throws it up on the couch. And Riff's like, thanks for the toy. And so he has his head sitting there. Tenor's looking and Riff is gladly chewing it and being all sassy with it. So um, I'm not worried about it because one, if I put him down, he's got a little more, you know, cojones when he's up versus when he's <laughs> on the floor. Cause when we have done this on the floor too, and he's like, just kidding. Can I have it? No. Okay. I'll leave. <laughs> so he's just screwing around. And, I, and the way that I would address that, I'm not concerned about it, but if I was concerned about it, a couple of things I would do is take them immediately, put them on the floor and put the toy down and see what it looks like there. Right. Um, <clears throat> so that would be something else too. And then I'd practice trading and, you know, some fun stuff like that. Did you have it? Yep. I'm um, coming. I was just waiting for you. First. No, we're good. All right. <laughs> it's like, that's mine. Yeah, he's like, can I have this part? And look how good, what a good dog. This dog, Tenor's such a nice pup. Riff, he's a little jerk, but that's okay. I love him anyway. Thankfully, he's cute. But again, now, if this were a larger dog, this might be a little different display, right? He's so but cute. I he's think what you dog. notice too, though, right, is Riff doesn't look, particularly worried about it at all right he's nice relaxed he's chewing on it he doesn't he doesn't freeze he doesn't get stiff even with the dog right three inches from his face yeah. <laughs> yeah. so that's what's that's what makes it so much of like normal behavior right he's just right. like no you gave this to me and and basically tenor's like i didn't mean to but okay right so he's respecting <laughs> he's respecting the laws of possession he's like i didn't mean to throw it at you but you know I'd like it when you're done. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's, that's cute. cute. That's very cute. cute. But it looks, that's a low level, right? So right. it's not, you know, for more displays and freezing and hovering, that's a whole nother story. Now, mind you, I should get video of the other way around because if Tenor has the, 
the thing. He's a little more like, no, it's mine. And he'll do that with all of them. But he's the, he's the um, oldest male in the house. He's pretty more confident, you know, and so forth. But he will be like, this is mine. Don't touch it. And he will correct if another dog's like, you know, but, you know, it, it, but that's not fairness, but right. It's he's fairness normal. correction. And it's normal. Yeah. yeah. It's normal behavior. So here's the thing. Uh, for those of you with multiple dogs, we have a new puppy. It is not okay for that puppy to go take the toy from that adult dog. It is not okay. Because remember, it's adorable because they're cute and little. But when they, be they come grown up and they start to do that, it it's not going to be fun for anyone involved. Um, so uh, it's something to consider. That is not an okay behavior. And I would definitely uh, inter intercede and take the toy away and give it to the dog that had it. Because... You don't want that situation to escalate as they get older and go into adolescence because that becomes a bigger problem. So I'm not a big fan of allowing that in my house, right? Yep. And I will actually, you guys may have seen this before, but I will show you another quick one of what it does look like when it gets a little more serious, even though nothing bad happens here, but um, it definitely gets a little more, you, could, you can see there's a, a lot more intent happening here. All right. So there's a toy. I'm going to give it to Noah over there. And as soon as Roscoe here sees he has a toy, he's like, hey, I'd like that. A little persistent on it, yeah. Oh, just wait. <laughs> so it looks pretty much playful right now, right? But now you kind of start seeing a little bit of that stalking behavior. Like, I want that. Come back here. Mm -hmm. And then it escalates even a little from there. Get Okay, so then we I'm waiting. I'm trying to say, hey, calm down a little bit, right? You could tell he's he really oh, oh was and Noah's trick. like, woohoo. Right. So <laughs> then you start seeing, ooh, look at that. Big body yep. slam. So whoop, I'll show that one more time in case you didn't see it. Boom. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He knocks him pretty dang hard, right? So that's the moment of that situation where it's like, you're done. Right. And I do totally stop it. I come grab him. I ask him to give me the toy. Like you guys are done playing now. Um, because the next step from the body slam mm -hmm. is he's going to take it or try and take it. And then, you know, that's mine. That's mine. That's mine. And somebody's going to get in a snarky fight. And even if it's not serious, even if nobody's out to like leave bite wounds, right. It's not what you want. You I don't know. want dogs to have to figure it out. Right. That's where you're like, you're done and you're done. Because Noah was not, I mean, he was having a good time, but he also was like, I have it and you don't. <laughs> right? so, yes, he wasn't asked. being a very educational big brother there. So, <laughs> Yes, that's true. <laughs> um, and, it, and it's normal for dogs to, you know, um, guard from each other. Some do, some don't. But if, you know, unless you're not having, you know, you don't want to let it to escalate into fighting because when it does, it's just, it becomes really complicated and it just, it's not fun for anyone. So ideally you don't want it to become a big deal as you go through, right? You want it to just interrupt it and not allow it to happen so that, um, they develop good, respectful boundaries with each other. And that's hard. You know, you don't want to let the, like Joanna said, you don't want to let the dogs work it out because I don't think that's a good plan for most of that. Yeah, um, same-sex dogs. Yep. It's, it's, yeah, Amy, you're absolutely right. With same-sex dogs, it gets a little more uh, difficult. And um, especially, uh, and females, if you have, uh, yeah. you want to definitely avoid any kind of altercations early on, especially like, as Lisa was saying, when they're mentally starting to develop those neuropathways, it's really, uh, so important. Right. And, um, yeah, and it's not okay. Like I said, it's not okay for the puppy to take the toys away from, unless they're playing for you with the toys mutually, they pick it up and move them around and all that stuff. Cause I will, I keep an eye on, um, I keep an eye on my, my little beagle and my um, lab because now he's getting bigger than she is. So, you know, he, he can get a little squishy uh, about stuff. So, and he's, but he's, pretty, still bigger. yeah, but he's, <laughs> but he's pretty good. I mean, he's, a, he's good at sharing. He doesn't, um, he doesn't have an issue with that. Right. But like Joanne said in the beginning, 
they might not be guarding toys. They might not, food might not be a thing. You or a couch or a place of the couch or something. So always keep an eye on it when they're young. Keep an eye on what, what they care about and what they don't care about. And, and just make sure it stays that way or if it's, there's a change. They might not have cared about it, you know, last month, but this month they care about it now, right, where they didn't before. Yeah, and, and guys, I think, you know, with our topic tonight, when to seek help, right, if you have an altercation, it's time. Don't wait for the second or third one because I promise you it doesn't get better. Unless you change how the dog feels about that, it does not get better. And, you know, when you heard, um, you know, Nancy say females, it's not true in every sense, but most senses, even in human beings, yeah. you guys can get in a fist fight and then end up having a beer. And women are like, she hated my shoes 20 years ago. I still hate her. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit more grudge holding and it's the same in the animal world. Females yeah. really classically do. Like you looked at me sideways. I hate you. Yeah. So, so we have a question for Michelle. What are good suggestions for keeping an older dog separated so the puppy can play with their puppy toy? So the like something. Oh, so uh, Michelle, I, I am, I, I am in that mold right now. So I have in my living room, I have a little X pen that I put the puppy with his toys, and then I give my adult dogs toys. You know, and everybody gets their stuff but the dogs don't get to come in and take each other's toys, right? Especially with the puppy. The puppy's not allowed to leave the, you know, so the expense of so the puppy can play there. Um, and then I have him play with uh, my beagle, who's more his size, um, so he can develop some better manners. So um, the two labs tend to be better with the toys. They don't care about that as much. What they do care about is food. My female does. She'll she'll guard. She doesn't guard against people, but um, she if you try to take her, seeing she's chewing on you're the, she's she's she'll warn you, but she, she's not gonna let you have it. It's not gonna be okay. So we're trying to get the puppy to understand that and to have a good experience early on with them playing. You know, in the, having that those toys in the same room in a positive uh, way. So, I, and that seems to be helping so that the puppy, you know, um, isn't rude or whatever. And, um, and I am very careful because my shepherd does care about toys um, and the puppy's still learning the rules of that stuff. So uh, I, and the, my lab, my female lab doesn't, um, um, toys are not, she doesn't care about them so much. So she won't guard those. Um, yep. And the the puppy doesn't is fine with that, right? So they're, it's all right. But uh, the yeah. shepherd's a little more. It's all mine. He likes toys a lot. <laughs> so again, see what's important, right? But he gets to see the puppy play, and he can play with his own toy, and life is good. So I just want, and what I would like for my puppy to learn is just play with your toys. Everybody plays with their own toys because they do. My female lab and my shepherd are really good like that. So. Yep. And like the how, I like baby gates a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Once you I end up in a multi-dog household, the $10 ones that aren't great anymore. So I have them that like, I get, they just always stay up. Like I have one between my kitchen and living room and that sort of thing. So that's a nice way you can not have to monitor quite so well. Right. So you just, you want to go to the bathroom or take a phone call, read an email. You don't have to watch um, quite so right so much the adult dog or if your adult dog is only interested in the toys because the puppy has the toys but really they want stuff you can always put your adult dog in a crate right yeah. and give them a nice something to chew on or like yeah. a nice little toy puzzle treat puzzle something like that that they can work on again they're safely contained and it just gives everybody a break right you get one too because you don't have to monitor quite so close yeah so hmm. all right uh, the next thing that, so resource guarding, that's one of the, that's one of the things that if you start to see or see signs of it, address, take, you know, really look for some help right away. The other thing is, um, the dog's ability, the, a, a handling piece, um, being handled. So Joanne, could you show the video that you have about the, with that? Hers. So and being is... handled because that you can see, I'm sorry, Joanne, uh, at that you can see at a very, very young age is of an issue or not. Um, one of our friends, uh, Melanie, um, uh, her puppy, her Vishla puppy uh, wasn't really a fan, you know, of being handled early on. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
No, you're good. So this is this is usually one of those common um, checks in any kind of puppy assessment, right? You sort of hold them on their back. And it's nothing more than this is rude and you it's probably not great for you. How do you handle it when I'm doing something super rude, right? So this is a some sort of a shepherd floofy giant dog combo puppy. <laughs> And you can see from right on, he's like, I don't like that. Oh, wow. Trying not to break his back. Yeah. He's like, get off me. Right. And he was a chunk. So like, I didn't want to hurt him. Like I would probably try and hold him for about, you know, seven to 10 seconds. And um, I, I didn't even get that far because he was like, get off me. Right. Um and you can just sort of see it happens pretty dang quick. So, so like uh, Joanne, go back to the start when you were going to get ready to pick him up already. Mm -hmm. um, already you saw him not really. Back. As, she, as she's handling him, he's already doing a lot of licking and all that stuff. So, oh, thanks, Grace. <laughs> like, nope. Right. And, and it does look sloppy, but I do, I do, I am like supporting his sensitive areas. So it's not like it's super, it's not like I'm letting him. He came back out. there. He did. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he's very forgiving. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yep. He's going to be a big boy. That's so, good. So he's very forgiving. So his social tolerance is good. However, he's, he's got some kind of aesthetic issues there. Right. You see him, um, as he's being handled, as she's picking him up, he's a little more tense. So, so while he's very forgiving, that's great because he'll probably be, um, he won't take offense because he didn't take offense. However, he is very clearly not not interested in being uh, handled. So it's something that you want to address. And, and this is a pretty, um, you know, pretty mild case, if you will, ish, maybe mi mild to moderate. So um, it, it tells you uh, with the puppy that you have to work on the making handling and being touched and all that a good positive thing. And I'm going to be honest um, with Melanie's uh, little a girl, we saw it on the puppy. I wish I had, I wish I would have had her um, carrot test handy. Um, she was not crazy about it and she was not very forgiving. Um, however, to this day, Melanie has done a lot of work, you know, handling her, t touching her, making touch more positive, And she still um, doesn't really love it. So, and, and Melanie at, uh, wanted for her to do confirmation and I told her, I go, I don't think this is going to happen for you because I don't think she's going to be okay. And um, I said, but, you know, you can try working on it, handling her massage, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, the answer is absolutely no. <laughs> she she uh, being handled, being reached for and all that, she won't bite, but she doesn't like it. It scares her. It makes her anxious, and it's a problem. And and I'm and and one of the th reasons you want to handle it is when you go to the vet, when you you know your your dog is is going to need to be handled by someone else and you, and they should be able to be okay with that. So that is if the puppy is not progress. You know, you if you start if you have a young puppy, uh, and you touch it and handle it and touch his paws and all that handling stuff and it's having a trouble. And if you're working on it, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's a timetable, but like for me, if you don't see improvement in that, I would definitely seek a professional, professional help for sure. Yeah. Here, I'll show you one more. That's a little, even a little more than that puppy, just so you can kind of get contextually the difference. Oh, those are big puppies. Well, they were big puppies, yes. Now look at him already starting uh -huh. to use his teeth. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> He's like, don't. I couldn't even put him down oh. safely, right? But if you watch, I mean, as soon as I get him, I, what I want is he didn't yeah. bite me. No. But he was absolutely willing to test teeth use on my head. 
debt app. Yeah. So see that in that case, you would definitely need to the and and how he ran away from and <laughs> yeah, like, get away from me. Yep. Right. So that is a much more extreme case for sure. Yep. That you would if you have something like that, definitely see somebody because they're gonna it's gonna take some time. That he's all, he's not forgiving. Right, that puppy. He's like ran away and probably wouldn't, wouldn't come back to her. Where the other shepherd puppy, while well, it was inappropriate, he didn't love it, but he was like, "Okay, I'll." Stay. Thank God that's over. What are you doing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Amy, uh, her dog took a long time to be okay with handling. Now fine with me, but not so great with others. Right, and that will always be the case. Right, number one, you didn't get her until she was an adult, so she's already feels how she feels. Right. Oh, no, um, she was still a puppy, but she was a young puppy. I think she was yeah. six months. Six okay. months. But so still. You may, have, you may have got her a little better, but, like, she's never going to be cool with handling, <laughs> right? I mean. Right. And well, so that's that's Ivy, right? Because when I first got her, on the um, when we reviewed her and checked her out, um, when we did our testing with her, she left the whole place. And she's like, you guys are insane. Don't touch me. Don't look at me. I'm all good. And I remember at the time it was like, the breeder was like, you really want to keep that one? And I'm like, well, <laughs> if not me, then who else? I know. Why not? I feel like a project today for the next 15 years. Um, but no, and, and it took a while. Like she did not, she was not okay with me. Um, but I worked really, really hard. I did tons of handling and feeding and, you know, stuff like that. We tried confirmation and then I realized, no, she's going to bite. So we're not going to do confirmation. And um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good choice. Right. Cause she did actually bite, but, um, and I saw it coming and I'm like, mm, I don't like it. So it, but it's still um, like to this day, she'll tolerate me doing it. But if anybody else does stuff, she gives them the big hairy eyeball, like get close to me and see what happens. So like if I take her for grooming, for example, they do have to muzzle her <laughs> with her little tiny buck. You know, they have the little duck muzzles. They're cute. Yeah. But anyway, to stop her. But she's he sent me a picture. I'm like, oh, my God, this is terrible. But um, I can groom her. It's not a problem. Right. So um, so I just resist doing that stuff. And even when she gets handled. Um, at the vet and stuff, it's still a problem. And I still watch her because I don't trust it. I'm like, you're, you look like you're going to bite with your big yeah. eyes. So. so Kathy mentioned about her puppy not being crazy about her being, feet being touched. Well, you're going to, this is an interesting thing. My lab female um, loves to be handled, loves to be touched. It does excite her, but she enjoys it. However, she does not like her, her she didn't, she's okay now. She didn't like her nails being done. That was a big issue. Um, you can handle anywhere else, do her ears, her teeth, everything else. She tolerates it well. Feet, not so much. Um, so ended up having to use the scratch board uh, to get her to teach her how to do her nails because it was just, it became, the more you push that, the worse it got. So I was like, yes. okay, so we're yes. going to just um, do the scratch pad. And luckily, uh, now it's, now I can clip her nails. Now I can Dremel. Now I can do everything else. Um, so, but it, it you know, she's five, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. It, and I, you know, it's, with some dogs, you, I did everything like with feet and now my male puppy lab puppy seems to be much better about the feet. Like he's cool about being handled. I'm able to clip his nails pretty regularly and he doesn't seem to have too many issues with that. So, um, I don't know. I think, um, I'm sorry, let me just say something real quick, Joanne, if you hang on to that thought. Okay. One thing I wanted to say was um, what I think is crazy about puppies when they do the pass the puppy and they hold them and don't let them down because they're squiggling. Please don't do that. That's not fair. Oh, yeah. Because remember, we would do pass the puppy. And then also when people say, you know, hold the dog until it stops squirming and then let you can let it down. I'm like, no, you're violating that dog. You're abusing its trust. You're abusing its it's opportunity to have free choice. It's not fair. Don't do that. Pay attention to the dog before you even approach because your their body language is going to tell you what you can do or should or shouldn't do. And when in doubt, don't do it. Even if the owner, like even was like, it's okay, hold my puppy. And I'll say I'm guilty of it, but I also knew like when Riff, when I first got him and stuff, he loved people. So 
but I knew that about him. And so then, and, and also I noticed too, when I held him for the very first time, he just like relaxed in my arms. He wasn't mm-hmm. fighting. He's like, okay, cool. So I knew that was okay with him. And then when I did have somebody hold him and stuff, um, I just watched him and I was like, well, if you're not okay with this, then we're done here. But I see that happen a lot. Um, um, where people do that. And I'm like, please don't do that. It's not kind to the dog. It's really unfair to them. And I can't imagine somebody groping me and being like, okay, you got to tolerate it. Stop sh- moving around. I want to touch you. <laughs> I, I would have a problem with it. <laughs> Just my two cents. So. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, you know, back to Kathy, if it's, if it's totally feet and not just nails, right. Cause that's the other thing. If I'm nervous about my feet and you know, all the time you're trying to do my nails, that's not, it's as many treats in the world. It's still not a great thing. Right. So some nice. dogs are like, I still hate this. So one of the things, if you want to use like a little bit of kind of cooperative care and give them a choice is I teach a shake. Right. And at first that shake, I'll pay you for touching one pad toenail whatever to my to my hand right Right. and eventually i'm going to build that up to you know will you let me close my hand around your paw and hold there and if at any time they want to grab it back you're welcome to right i'm just saying can you do this knowing what's going to happen right there's food involved and if you let me do that i'll keep feeding you as long as you let me touch your feet whenever you want to go away go away and the food stops right so at least the dog has some autonomy and choice in that scenario like do you want to play the foot game like no, not right now. Okay. We'll try again later. Yep. So, um, so yeah, so being uh, the puppy being, you know, being handled and like Amy has a new doe puppy, um, and she's got a, a leg that's not, you know, that's got, that's deformed. So she needs to be okay being handled by other people. Cause she's going to be handled a lot. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of Cairo in her future. There's a lot of other things that are going to, be part of her life. So she's got to be comfortable with it. And she does, she doesn't seem to have any issue being um, handled or anything like that, but because, and Amy's very handsy. So, <laughs> so, so she gets handled more than she wants probably, but get over that quick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. so she'll be, but, but it's something to consider, right? Especially if your dog that like Lisa mentioned earlier, a dog that has to be groomed or whatever. Um, and, a, and so like the video, uh, <laughs> that video that Joanne showed with that shepherd. Yeah. That's a pretty severe case. Like it looks, you know, people say, well, he has to pee or he just woke up or whatever. It's like, nope, that, that dog nef- definitely needs something to, you know, needs some inter- some professional interference there to help with being comfortable, being handled and touched. And a lot of, you know, some of the ways to do that is maybe some massage with, with, with a massage therapist that knows what they're doing that can take it easy or at least coach you through it and then you do it and then it be, maybe down the road be able to let someone else do it. Um, but that when, you know, picking up the, and, and, and my little, my little 12 year old mentor, um, also is not very socially tolerant. When you, when I used to pick her up when she was, um, a puppy, she would be like rigor mortis, really stiff. <laughs> being handled. She didn't like it. And now I think, and I'm going to be honest, it wasn't until a few years later that she was like, you know, when I held her in my arms, you could feel her relax. She didn't, she was never, you know, never a fan. So that's an interesting, and I, I, I think there's a genetic component to that, right? Because it's like, especially when when you get a dog that comes to you as a puppy, there's nothing bad happened to it yet. <laughs> uh, you know, if it was raised, in, well, Rizzo was a rescue dog, but still, if you have a, a dog that comes from a breeder that has that, it's like, that's definitely a genetic component. So you definitely want to be able to, uh, to work on it. And again, just be aware that that's a, that that can become a big problem later on. People don't think how, don't think about how, to, how important that is, have being able to be handled in a positive, you know, cooperative way. Right. And, and just to point this out, cause the videos that we showed sort of went the opposite direction of that. But if you have a puppy that turns into Frankenstein, when you pick it up, that is the same problem yep. It's just that dog's probably not going to be the one to bite you in the face, but that dog still needs help um, right. enjoying touch, right? So just because they're still, right? If you see those super straight legs and they're yeah. totally frozen and stiff. That was Rizzo. Yeah, right? That's a problem. Big problem too. So, right? You got the <laughs> yeah. dog. Yeah. 
dog. So <laughs> that was her uh, yeah. when she was a young when she was a young and now uh, now she wants to be picked up um, by me and by people she loves. Right. Uh, other people, not so much yet. <laughs> Joanne made the list. <laughs> She's Not on for many list. years, but I'm on it now. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, but yeah, she doesn't, you know, only certain people can pick her up and she's comfortable with that. So, um, so, but if you have a puppy that, you know, ha being handled and stuff is a problem, you definitely want to seek somebody, some help with that, with that problem, or at least get some Gosh. input to get some input to make it better or to help the dog with that, with that problem. Right. Cause uh, unfortunately um, that go, that's one of those things that goes unnoticed and then it becomes a big problem later being handled, being touched, being, uh, and then it just becomes a battle of wills and it just it gets more complicated as, as time goes on. So. Well, it's like, it's like just because the dog isn't reacting and they're tolerating it, it's okay. And I think that's what people miss. Right. Oops. Yeah. And bye-bye. <laughs> She'll be back. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So it's one of her, so it's one of those things, right. That, that being able to ha be handled. Um, welcome back. <laughs> Way to go, Roscoe. Guess who clicked the wrong button? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so yeah, but, uh, but that's one of those. So being able to be handled uh, and be comfortable being, uh, you know, handled. And that's, again, you're going to know it pretty quick. When they're a pup, when you get a, a young puppy, they're either going to be really comfortable with it right away, or they're not. And we're working at it strongly. Don't consistently, not strongly, because people then insist like it's got to be okay. No, a couple of minutes every day will get you really far. You don't have to be manhandling your puppy for hours on end. Just little bit of, you know, just petting and making it a very positive thing is in many cases just enough. The more severe cases, you know, might require a licky mat and some other, you know, things that that will make the dog more comfortable. So those are so the resource guarding and and that and being handled because those are the two things that will get you what bitten if it's not addressed. And in many and and in the mild cases, yeah, they'll grow out of it. It gets better. Um, but in the in if there if it's not wait if you're if it's not handled and you wait till it's too late, it's it's too late. So those two are, are big, you know what I mean? They, they can be, they can lead to biting and other things that, that can cause some serious issues between you and the dog, which is why, I mean, there's a, a bunch of other things we can talk about as far as puppy about things, but those two are really big. The other one uh, that we talked a little bit about earlier was um, separation anxiety. Um, many times we cause some of that with puppies. They never, they're never alone. They can never be away from you, blah, blah, blah. And that's something that you definitely want to work on. Um, I have shepherds too, and shepherds can be really um, needy. needy and quirky about being left or yeah. being with another stranger or whatever. So I, my, all my shepherds have gone to an overnight uh, somewhere else so they can get, be comfortable being away from me, mm -hmm. right? Um, because yeah, my lifestyle, my dogs are with me all the time. Yep. Um, so I work, I have to work to keep them. I have to work for them to be away from me. Right. Where most people, if they have jobs, they go to work and they, the dogs are at home. I don't have that. They go to work with me. Um, so I do sometimes I deliberately leave some, the men at home without me so that they, they can get used to that. Well, I've taken, um, I think it was funny. Well, not funny, but I was like, whoops. So I took the, Ivy, like when I go, if I go somewhere or whatever and I'm gone, my husband will let him outside and then she'll sit at the corner waiting and watching and she won't potty. And I'm like, oh, whoops. I went the opposite direction, right? I made her so interested and in, 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 on me as well. So I was like, Ugh. now mind you, she was perfectly fine with some people, like that she has a small list of people that are fine with her. And then my Dutch, right? My Dutch Shepherd cadence, um, when I went to, when we went out of town and went to a seminar, I was gone for five days or something. Um, my husband was sending me a video that she kept sitting and looking, sitting and looking up the stairs for me. I'm like, it broke my heart. I'm like, darn it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, inevitably we're not going to be perfect. Right. But you try to do your best and, you know, and sometimes things get overlooked and, 
but for the most part, it's not to such a degree that she's not functional. I mean, it took her a little bit, but it made me realize that, you know, I needed to do more of that um, because I'm really, you, it's, you can be really good at creating needy dogs, you know, especially in our line of work. Yeah. And yeah, because our dogs, you know, well, and Joanne works from home too, but yeah. um, we, we, our dogs are with us all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we use them for our, our, our work. Um, you know, they like my two when I, you know, uh, jive and tangle, they're used to going to work. And now the puppy, you can already see him like, okay, let's go to work. Right. <laughs> um, that's what they're used to. So it's one of those things you've got to be real careful. You got to, you know, if you have a friend that can keep the puppy overnight and they get used to being away from you, it's so important that they learn how to be comfortable away from you mm -hmm. because it, it's, it, you're not doing him any favors by, you know, I know it's, it's great when we feel love. Oh, the dog loves me so much. Yeah. But if something ever happens to you, that dog's going to suffer. So you right. definitely want to make sure that you, you create a confident dog in any situation with and without you. Right. Obviously they're happier with you, but if you, you know, it's, it gets, becomes very challenging when they can't even be away from you for a second. And then if you have a puppy that's very young, that has an issue being away, uh, that are, you know, that can't be, away, you know, a puppy that hasn't even really bonded with you yet. And they're still having a cow. I'm like, mm, that would be, that would be something to look at. Yeah. Roberta working, especially work, working from home, you get your puppies. Yeah. Yeah, that is absolutely true. Like, and, and, and like I said, in my line of work, my dogs, we go to work to, you know, they go to work with me all the time. So I have to really be mindful about leaving them at home sometimes. Sometimes they don't have to work with me. Sometimes I, you know, I rotate them. Some will come, one will come and they also building that independence from each other as yep. well. Right. You want them to be comfortable being away from each other. Right. If you have a pack of dogs, you want to definitely be where they can be away and be comfortable and happy away from each other. Right. Yeah, but I think even you, even taking them to work though, Nance, right? They're still away from you because you have an office and so they're not like yes. by your side. So, you know, when Roberta's mentioning like COVID working from home, I, even a guy on my team was like, oh yeah, the dog comes up with the ball and I throw it. I'm like, I said, I don't do that, right? Work time is work time. I will let you out at lunch, which is more than what you'd get when I worked at the office. But otherwise it is nap time. Like you guys right. need to lay down and do your thing during the day because pretend I'm not here. So it's hard because I, I don't know if the world will ever change where we have to go back. Gosh, I hope not. But <laughs> I go to work one day a week now in the office. Right. And so I'm home the rest of the time. So, right. They do get that one long day where I'm not home. So, yeah, yeah no. And Roberta, I'm doing that with uh, Mambo now, too. Right. Some, he gets crate time. He gets crate time when I'm home because he don't like that. He did. That's where he gets a little yippy and uh, yappy when I'm home and he's in a crate. He doesn't like that. So we're working on it. <laughs> I also think a lot of people, too, when the dog's home, like you come home. Right. And then the dog's like, "Woo, you're here. Thank God, because you're the most exciting thing in their daily lives. Right. And then when you are home and you don't create them, I think is critical. Like a lot of people I know, you know, and then they say, oh, well, they don't like to be crated anymore. Well, are you creating them periodically, like putting them down for a nap, just like with kids? Right. So I think that um, that's important as well. I mean, you guys are touching on it as well. But what I'm saying is that I think that um, not enough people create them, no. whether there's people home or, you know, we're right. good at doing it when they're not. But when there are people home, like I'll create my dogs are created right now. I'm like, relax. I got stuff to do. And they're just hanging out in their crates. And if I say crate, they go running. They're like, something good is going to happen in here, you know? So, um, and I'm not saying they have to be crated all the time, but periodically, especially when you're trying to set routines and patterns of behavior, it's really important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I did get a, very, a really pretty interesting video. This one is like, to me, this can go either way. I wouldn't call this separation anxiety, but I would absolutely call it this dog needs work. Like, don't not do right this dog needs something to happen pretty quick you got to change something wow uh, so right he's i know you can't see his face but like or she maybe i couldn't tell but um the dog's not panting the dog's not particularly you know super stressful however you're getting a lot of persistent behavior yeah, vocalization. Yeah. Yeah. 
He looks unsteady. It looks like it does. Yeah, his back feet are slipping on the on the floor. But now, who knows? Is the person's home or not? Right. But either way, right? This dog's clearly. We don't want to watch Caesar. Uh, This dog's dog's like, what are you doing to me? I'm not. I promise. So you know that dog clearly. That could get much worse, or it could just stay like that. But even if it stays Mm -hmm. like that, that's not great for that dog. No. You want to make that better. Right. Yeah. And and there's an old school of thought, let them just cry it out or bark it out or just mm-hmm. ignore them. Nope. No, because I'll tell you, that turns into this. Hang on. This is the part that sucks. Um, I'm going to make sure. Hang on. I'm going to make this bigger. Remember um, Rudy Demeester when he yes. talked about the comfort um, he took on separation anxiety cases and stuff like that from, and he was in Belgium. And um, one, one of the things he said is if you really question it, record it, videotape it, what is happening? Yeah. What's happening when you're gone? And I think that's a telltale. And I think a lot of the cases people call it loosely. It's like love. It's a loose term used loosely where it's separation anxiety. But I think what it is, is that the dogs cry because they don't want to be in a crate because you haven't trained them for that. Right. Um, is what I've seen a lot of. Um, especially now with COVID. Right. And if you've never seen it, this is where it gets dangerous. Yep. So already full open mouth panting. Don't pay attention to why that, we're going to call that a, a yard collar, not an e-collar. Mm-hmm. But, so it starts with some vocalization, right? Testing the door. <sighs> Just the poor dog's eyes, right? They're like, right. oh, panic. Not for you. You wait. <laughs> Did that dog pee in its crown? No, no, no. The water bowl's right in front. Oh, I thought okay. that too, and then I had to watch okay. it again. Okay. So now we're getting some like destruction. The dogs can break teeth doing this stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. It's sad to watch, right? That mm-hmm. dog is, it's not boredom. That dog's in panic mode, right? I'm going to die in here. Wow. I know, I know, honey, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Got it. So you can see how, with no help, right, it's escalating. The dog's getting worse and worse and worse. And I don't know if you guys can hear it, but in the background, it sounds like a tiny dog is also somewhere else here, probably in another crate, starting to get agitated as well. Right. And the other thing is, just to, as a FYI, please don't put your dogs in a crate with a collar on. <laughs> Ever. Uh, uh, they can get... Uh, they can... Um, yeah, that... Wow. She's done it before. He... Mm-hmm. Yep. Has done it yep. before. And look at all the hair coming off of him. Right? <laughs> Super stressful. <laughs> So now he's going to scratch at the door and the person clearly is like, okay, don't, don't ruin my door. So, you know, that's happened before too. So that sort of stuff just makes you sad to see, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? It's, that is sheer panic. That dog thinks, you know, the world's coming to an end and that's, it doesn't get better from there. It just continues to, to really plague the dog. Um, that's where like some real complexes can come from where you need medication to get them through that. Cause yeah. And if you have a young puppy that can all be prevented, right? Mm-hmm. Put him in a crate, give them something to do, blah, blah, blah. I am, I am a militant about that because I want my dogs to be good in a crate. Uh, it's so important for me for them to be uh, comfortable and happy in there. So I work quite uh, really, really hard on it. So like I said, my little guy, he just wants to be where I'm at, which is great. But sometimes he can't be, and he has to be okay with that. Um, yep. 
and he's not, you know, he's just, uh, he's found his voice, which makes me crazy, but, um, but that's the only thing, but he's, otherwise he's fine. And he's fine and happy in a crate. He just has to understand, you know, sometimes he can't be with right by me. Right. Yep. And if you're not sure, I'm going to tell you guys what I just found. Um, I had one of the furbos when it first came out and like, Ooh, uh, you can talk through it and throw your dog a treat that freaks dogs out even more when you talk to them. So like tr if you have those cameras, don't, I would talk to him cause he was staying at my, with my mom when I was at work, this was before my house was finished. So, um, but so there's a, there's a company called blink, right. And they have these tiny little ice cube cameras. They're only about this big. And if you wait, they usually go a buy one, get one free. So about $35, you can get two cameras. They work in two rooms. You can talk two way with them. Um, and they just work through your Wi-Fi and an app on your phone. Um, and I just find, you know, having to go to work um, one day a week, it's nice to be able to check in and monitor and make sure, you know, mm -hmm. nobody's melting down. It has an, um, an arm on it, like able, disable armed or disarmed and it so it'll tell you if there's motion mm -hmm. um if you want to pay for the extra service they'll of course it'll take videos anytime it detects motion but i don't i don't pay for it so mm -hmm. um, that's what i have I, I have blink cameras yeah it's just it, they're cheap right i mean as far as electronics they're a nice cheap way to check in with your dogs and you can mount them anywhere like i just yeah. have them sitting on tables so yeah no i have them in, in my kitchen in my yes i have them everywhere <laughs> So, because I always want to make sure I check in on, on, um, on my little guy and on my dogs, because I travel a lot. So that's, um, um, so I want to check in all the time. Um, anyway, so there's a, a many, uh, many things, many other things you can work on, but separate, you know, getting them doing the prep work to avoid these three situations is really well worth your time. If you do nothing else, the resource, if there's a resource guarding just to prevent it being handled and making them be comfortable being away from you in whether it's in the same room and all that it's, it is, it'll, it'll make your life and their life so much better and happier. Um, and then when it becomes um, the separation anxiety, if you put the work in, but if you're having trouble, see somebody sees um see somebody who can help you uh, help your puppy get in, in the right place because and i know a lot of bad advice is being given out at times but if you're not sure about it or if it doesn't sound right then get another opinion you would do it if it was a medical issue <laughs> if you didn't like what you would go mm -hmm. check it. so i would definitely um you know ask around you know spend a little time uh interview <coughs> trainers to be able to to give you the, the the guidance you need to help your puppy get through that some of the stuff right yeah. all right guys thank you all um hope hopefully your new year will be uh sunny and bright as we will try to bring more wonderful topics to you uh in this 2023 thank you so much have a great night thanks everybody i know